Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of Virtual Virtual Reality. The aim of this project is to make some crude VR gear. I don't have a VR headset, so last time I made this virtual camera, which is basically a screen that's tracked in space using a pixie cam and an Arduino, and as I move it around it puts that data into Unity 3D where the 3D environment is and it moves the camera around and then we put that camera view back on here so as I move this I can look around in virtual space so it's like a window into the virtual world. The idea is to do some experiments controlling things from a virtual world that control things in the physical world and having things in the physical world that control stuff in the virtual world so we can do that crossover and a bit of mixed reality. Last time we got this running it worked okay, I had a few issues uh, but I've actually solved those now, and today we're actually going to get this working a bit better with an inertial measurement unit so we get some of the other axis. And then we're going to make a hand controller so we can actually push things in the virtual world, and hopefully I'll be able to see it through my virtual camera. So first of all, I fixed the serial comms issues I had last time, which accounts for most of the glitchiness. Uh, so basically what we're doing now, the Arduino is uh, waiting for two bytes of data, reading them and throwing them away, and then it's sending the data back. But it only sends data if it gets two bytes of data in its buffer. So basically um, it sits there doing nothing until it gets two bytes on the serial port. It's capable of going, uh, basically it's running at an interval of every five milliseconds, so it's capable of delivering data 200 times a second or 200 frames a second which is really fast um, but basically it will only send data back uh, when uh, when it's asked for data so that keeps everything nice and clean and in unity if we go and look at the script that I've got here then uh, basically on each update script which is uh, basically every frame it's sending AA it could be anything in the future it will be something that sends back stuff like the uh, to make the pager motor run in the hand controller for instance but for now it's anything and then it expects four pieces of data and it parses them in and um, moves the camera around so basically Unity is driving the frame rate rather than the Arduino just smashing out data all the time and hoping that Unity is there to receive it so now it runs pretty flawlessly opens and closes the COM port at the start and the end and um, I don't get any buffer overflows I do have a timeout on here 50 milliseconds but it never gets that far Right, so that seems to be working pretty well now, so you should be able to see the Unity view as well of where the camera's looking, and you can see it's quite responsive as I move around. I've got data smoothing running over 200 samples now, but most of the glitches and things were with the serial comms, so now it works pretty flawlessly. So obviously we can go straight right, straight left, I've worked on the scaling quite a bit. If we go close to this and I go up and down, you can see it's almost real. And of course I can come all the way back here and we still get tracking pretty much about 10 to 12 feet away so um, the physical objects or at least the objects in the physical world or in the virtual world seem to be in the same space in the physical world so I'm pretty happy with the scaling and uh, everything runs pretty glitch free so quite happy that that works and I can look all around in my environment I've added one more pole at the back which is supposed to represent my tripod uh, which is almost in the right place and that's the zero point of the environment. So that's all great, but the only things I can't do are turn the camera this way, because it thinks I'm rotating this way, and I can't look up and down, which I really want to be able to do for those objects on the ground, so I don't have to crouch right down to look at the front of them. So uh, that's going to be very hard to do with the pixie cam, unless we have more coloured lights or something and try to triangulate. But in fact what I'm going to do is just put an inertial measurement unit on here, that will measure the angle and send that data back in and modify the camera position. We can also compensate, so if I do turn and I turn like this, it knows how much of it is turning one way and how much of it is turning this way with the lights and that camera. So uh, obviously we can compensate for anything as well if we do this and we don't turn this way and we can sort out all of that data. So if you've been watching my Robot X series, this thing might look familiar. This is an MPU6050 and an Arduino Pro Mini, and it's the same thing. I've got three of these in Robot X, which help provide its stability. In fact, this is the same 3D prints that bolts onto 2020 extrusion, and exactly the same components, and exactly the same code. And uh, what I'm using here is the uh, Jeff Roberg I2C Dev Lib library to support the MPU6050 with motion apps. So it does the fusion on board for the accelerometer and the gyro data, and it just gives you the data, and I'm just dumping out there the pitch and roll, and you can see them in the terminal there. So uh, as we tilt this around, you should see the um, second column there mostly moving and coming back to zero, and if I tip it the other way, 
you should see um, the other one there tipping all the way up um, in actual degrees. So uh, we're going to bolt that onto the monitor, take the data off to the Arduino with the camera on and merge that data in. All right, so I fitted that onto the back of my screen now and this blue cable takes that serial data away. Yep, you've guessed it, it takes it all the way to my Pixie Cam so it can get the data on the Arduino and send that on to the serial port. Yes, it's a bit hacky, but basically I've now put an Arduino Mega in here so it can receive data on its serial port down here. So literally the wire just goes into here, this gets the data from the handset, and it sends it off to the USB serial back into Unity. All right, so now as well as all the uh, normal functions working, we've got a couple of extra axes. So now I can tilt the display down and we can look down or we can look up and that feels perfectly natural. So that's the IMU data just synced to the virtual camera data. So um, if I'm a child and I'm down here, I can look up at the objects. And if I'm really tall, we can kind of look down from the top and of course all the other things still work so I can look from the side. The other axis I've implemented is a bit of compensation but it means if I turn the monitor the picture almost stays level, it's not quite right but it doesn't get confused anymore with this axis. It actually knows that I'm turning it so it takes a bit off the other axis and it tries to keep the picture level, it's not doing a very good job. Some of the other axes still work of course. But when you're holding this with both hands and walking around, it seems pretty natural. It's tracking pretty well now. So look up and down. Be better when there's more things in the environment. But I'm pretty happy with the results so far. In case you're wondering, I'm using Bill Porter's Easy Transfer library again to take the data from here onto the Arduino so those two axes don't get scrambled. It does a checksum, puts a header on, basically chucks the data away if it's rubbish. So we should find that the data is pretty reliable. This is the same library I went into in some depth in one of the Ultron videos about Ultron's hearing and getting all that sensor data back to Ultron's brain. So check that one out. But I'm pretty happy I've got a handset now. I can move around and we can have a look in the environment and everything's on these plugs here. So we've got one for data, one for HDMI and one for power. So we can unplug these and pack it all up and take it somewhere. But it's not that much fun actually just basically looking around in the environment. It'd be really good if I could interact with it. So what I really need is some sort of hand controller that I can poke things, maybe shoot things with a couple of buttons on and actually manipulate stuff in the virtual environment. So let's have a look at making that. So I've modeled this handset. I've done this in Fusion 360 and uh, basically we've got a handset here with two light up sections again so we can track it and a tray for the electronics and I'm going to cut this into two halves for printing and basically we'll put two some NeoPixels in there to give it two different colored lights that we can track with a pixie cam and it'll also have another inertial measurement unit in it and I'm planning to make this one wireless. Here comes one side of my handle. All of the middle there is support material waiting for the top. So it seems to be going pretty well. It hasn't warped at all yet. So we'll come back in a bit and see how that's going. So it's just doing the top surface on all of that support material and it seems to be going pretty well. Okay, I've already stuck the two halves together. They're ABS, so I've done a solvent weld with acetone and I've fitted two buttons, actually left holes there for two buttons. So these are my diffusers, again, printed in Tormann Alloy Nylon, which fit on there. They're gonna need a bit of glue or something, but those will have um, illumination in them. Yeah, it's quite chunky, isn't it? But I do need to get all those electronics in. So uh, there's a blackout section in between the two halves so light doesn't shine through and we can make those two separate colors. So I need to fix some NeoPixels. I've already done most of the electronics. Uh, basically, I've got two Arduino Pro Minis on here. One is to control the IMU, which uses one interrupt, and the other one is for lighting. And that's because NeoPixels use all of the interrupts, so I thought I'd separate those out. Um, I've also additionally got a Bluetooth uh, adapter here, which is um, one of the HCO5s, and if you look carefully at the Arduino Mega when I showed you that a bit ago, you'll notice the other half was already wired in there into another serial receiving port. Um, and I've got a USB boost adapter here to power it, and that slots neatly into the handle. So I need to wire up my switch wires and the NeoPixels, and then we can get on and get that tracked into the environment. Right, so I've got this lovely uh, purple and yellow there. Hopefully you can see just there. And uh, my electronics is running and I'm sending that data off using the easy transfer library to the other Arduino. So now um, I'm just, uh, I've hacked the code here basically to just send me the data from uh, that and it's in the data set my data two coming over with easy transfer for the pitch roll and the two buttons so now every time i send my two bytes to the arduino it returns some data 
So if I press the buttons, you should see one of those goes to zero. If I press the other one, we should get that. And if I press them both, if I can do it, yep, yeah, we get both zeros. And obviously if I move this thing around, so if we pick it up, we should see one axis there. The second one is changing. See if I can get to 45 degrees, close enough. And obviously it goes positive the other way. And the same with the other axis. So now we just need the pixie cam to track it and we can integrate that into the environment. All right, so I've had to do a bit of a redesign to the handset to move these two things closer together so there's no gap in the middle. I had actually tested color codes by putting a blanking thing in the middle with the monitor and it works okay, but it works much better if they're actually touching. So uh, now we can see that we've got in Unity, the camera still works fine. And if we look at the variables on the bottom right hand side here, uh, we can see that um, we've got the other variables for this. And if I press the buttons, you'll see those changing from one to zero. And we can see the pan and uh, the pitch and roll, I should say, and all the other variables changing as I move the objects around. So now all that's left is to attach this to another object in Unity and I can make something to shove those blocks with. So I've put some new things in my environment so we can have a look around now. There's some green trees. I've coloured some things in with some basic colour textures. So all of the camera tracking and everything is still working and that's good. We've got a slightly bigger environment and we've also got this ground plane. If I have a look down there uh, with the things attached so that everything's got gravity assigned and they don't fall into space. So if we have a look down uh, to my right here, there's now this red stick lying down. And um, in fact, that's my hand controller. So if I pick this up and wave it around, we should be able to see that um, that's basically it there. So now I can use this to go and hit things. So if I uh, go forwards here, give those a shove, um, I can knock all those things over. And you should be able to see that in the uh, physics view as well. So I'm just going to uh, stick on this so we can see where the camera's pointing. So you can see that I've got my uh, field of view there. So um, what I've done is implemented a thing so the buttons zoom in and out so I can come in or out of the environment if I can't reach something. If I turn more than 35 degrees to the left here, it takes me sideways and that should take me back the other way. So let's uh, go and knock some more things over. There we go. It's pretty okay. I mean, um, it's a bit spongy feeling, but uh, for what it is, it works pretty well. Let's um, knock those trees over. See if I can push these balls off. No, nope, the other one's gone. All right, so not 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 really a very fun game, but uh, kind of okay, I guess. What can we do with these? Give them another shove. The uh, red stick, actually, the hand controller can go all the way through the floor, and so the camera can, unfortunately. So sometimes it's. Uh, rather hard to hit things. Let's just uh, see if we can get that tree to go away. So that seems to be working pretty well. I'm aware it's a pretty budget solution and I basically made it out of things I already had in my house. Obviously there's some uh, better solutions out there already that use multiple cameras. Um, some are DIY solutions and some are all the way up to an Oculus or an HTC Vive with its really good tracking. But um, basically that doesn't really matter. What I wanted to do was build a really simple way of interacting in the virtual world so that I can carry on with the development. And my aim was to try and do some projects that um, have interaction between the physical and the virtual world. So perhaps controlling some of these robots and things from the virtual world or making gameplay concepts um, that are augmented reality or part more virtual or more physical or that people can interact in both environments. So perhaps we could have a kind of game of laser tag where someone is in VR shooting in VR but when you're looking for your screen in the physical world, perhaps a laser pointer on a gimbal on the ceiling points to where they are. And then when you look in the monitor, you can see them and then you can shoot them in the physical world. So both people can interact even if they're not in the same environment. So I'm really looking for gameplay concepts. If you've got any ideas, let me know. I'm going to come up with some simple ideas next time. And obviously some of that could be this hand controller as a physical interface in the physical world. Because of course I can put this down in the physical world, see it from the virtual world. And the buttons could be other sensors that means someone in the physical world can press them and that does something in the virtual world. We can also of course send data back out of the virtual world so the simplest thing is a pager motor in here that buzzes when it hits something by sending data back out but we can have other interfaces so perhaps a shooting game where I shoot things in the virtual world and the things like bottles or boxes on little stands fall down in the physical world with a little motor that pushes them when I shoot the correct target. 
So next time I'm going to come back with some concepts like that. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. Um, if you'd like to fund my channel, all of my projects are funded pretty much from Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and become an xrobot superfan and you can get access to my videos early, a live broadcast with me and some other benefits. I also have a t-shirt store selling limited edition t-shirts and this design expires at the end of March 2017. Hopefully there'll be another one after that if you're watching in the future, so check out those links in the description to this video. Alright, that's all for now.